Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are taking our very first look at the new campaign tier 8 German cruiser, the Admiral Schroeder. So with that being said, let's get straight to our commander. We are running Azure Lane Bismarck. I know, crazy concept. Why would I do something like that? That's a battleship commander on a cruiser. I go over it. It's, it's a mess. Anyway, <laughs> here we go. Azure Bismarck is our commander. We are running uh, Haruna and Hipper as our inspirations. We have, um, you should see the other guy, Porcupine, Warheight, and Master Mechanic as our uh, commander skills. And then fight fire with fire because what else am I going to use? <laughs> anyway, we also are running the secondary battery mod too. We are running Propulsion Mod, running Concealment Mod, and we are running the Epic Secondary Battery Mod 3. Why am I buffing secondaries on a cruiser? It's because the guns suck. The main guns are terrible on this thing. So, the only thing you got going for you is a ridiculous suite of secondaries. Uh, and they are, in fact, ridiculous. I'm talking levels of, uh, you know, Schlieffen, uh, Colombo types of uh, ki kind of secondaries. These are extremely accurate, fast-firing secondaries that are disgusting. So, that's your best asset. Try to make it as good as possible and try to, you know, build what you can out of it. Now, as far as I'm aware, there's no cruiser commander that gives you a secondary build. So, I had to use a battleship commander and try to find a commander that works. And I finally found what the Azure Lane Bismarck could be used for. Uh, and that's this particular ship. So, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Is there a better ship captain out there for this? I don't know. Uh, I think this is probably the best possible choice, at least from what I see. Now... You are giving up any idea that the main guns are going to have any range whatsoever. But trust me, you don't want them to. You want to be up close and personal. If you're shooting this thing at any sort of range, you're going to be disappointed. The uh, shell grouping isn't the greatest in the world. You're going to get a fire occasionally with the HE. Uh, don't try to shoot AP unless there's a broadside cruiser in front of you. Battleships will just shatter your shells. Doesn't matter what range you're at uh, for the most part. I mean, unless you're shooting superstructure. Um, like, it's, it's ridiculous. The AP on this thing is terrible. Like I said, the only time you should be using the AP is if somebody decides to give you a full broadside. Uh, and even then, if it's a battleship, you got to aim for weak points. Superstructure, upper side plating, bow and stern side plating. Avoid belt at all costs. You will, you will just shatter on their belt. It is terrible. Okay? Against cruisers, it's not too bad. I'll give you guys a couple of clips of what happens if a cruiser decides to go broadside and you have AP. Uh, I'll let you see what the secondaries are capable of. Plenty, uh, but let's get into the loadout. So we are running the sonar and we are running the enhanced secondary targeting mod. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you're going to run the enhanced secondary targeting, which you should be on this thing, get rid of the, uh, you have to trade off the engine boost. So I let you guys decide if that's worth it or not, but trust me, it's worth it. Uh, with propulsion mod, you don't need the uh, engine boost anyway. You're going to be fine. Repair party. Uh, obviously, with the uh, extra two heals, we get four heals on this thing, which are going to come in handy. You're going to need that. Um, and they they reload in 69 seconds, so nice. <laughs> we are running the epic battle booster for a little bit of range on the main guns, a little bit of movement speed, and cooldown time for consumables is reduced by a little bit. We're running the Italian Unity flag because if you squint just right, kind of looks like a uh, Spartan. And then, of course, we have the Type 9 camo that comes with the ship. Okay. Uh, next, we have survivability, 59,300 hit points with a 22% torp damage reduction. Main batteries are 305 millimeter 50 caliber SK L50 DRH LC 1925s. As the Germans like to do, they like to just tag on everything that ever happened to that gun in its entire service or like build history onto the, the weapon name. So uh, there you go. You get eight of them uh, and they should be shooting HE most of the time. So keep that in mind. 16.1 kilometer firing range with the Epic mod on or the Epic uh, battle booster on. 18 second reload. They're terrible. The reload on this thing's awful. Um, it's, it's, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not a good main gun ship. If you're thinking it's Ager, it's not. I would take Ager over this thing any day of the week. 
Not saying that this is the worst ship I've ever played, because it does have a fun element, and that is the brawling secondaries. These secondaries are a meme, and we're going to showcase them in their full power today. Uh, 180 degree turn time, 25.7 seconds. That's pretty terrible, as you'd expect, and you feel every bit of it. The one caveat to that is that one of the rear turrets is a 360 degree turret, so it tends to get to where you need it most of the time. So at minimum, you've got three of your turrets ready most of the time. Whereas the fourth turret will take half a year to turn around. Uh, the maximum HE shell damage is 3150 with a 22% set chance to set fires, which seems a little bit low, but is what it is. AP shell maximum damage is 7700. Remember, these are 305s. I thought 22 sounded a little bit low, considering 203 millimeter guns can uh, brush up against that uh, and we're 100 millimeters larger. So you'd think we'd have a little bit more fire chance there. However, Secondaries, that's what this ship is all about, right? It's literally all about the secondaries. You have 20 128 millimeter L61 KM40s that reach out to 10.4 kilometers with this build and reload in just 2.6 seconds. They have a 1500 maximum damage, but most of the time those are gonna be shattering anyway. Uh, they, can, they can definitely tear up destroyers though. These are not the 105 millimeter guns that you think about when you think of Bismarck and, and uh, Grosskarfurst and the Schlieffen and all that. The 105s uh, are, are one thing. These are 128s, which means they do pin more. I don't know the exact stats on them. I'm sure somebody will look it up. I'm probably, I'm pretty sure it would be quarter pin on these. So you would take 128 and divide it by four. Let me just do that math real quick. I could be wrong though. So 128 divided by four. It's 32 mil that it would be able to pin. That seems a little bit sus, so maybe it isn't quarter pin. It might be one-fifth pin or something like that. Let me know. I'm sure you stats folks out there probably know better than I do. But uh, then you have the 150 millimeter L60 SKC-25s. You get nine of those. And uh, they fire out to 10.4 kilometers as well, reloading in just 5.1 seconds, firing HE with a maximum damage of 1,700 and an 8% chance to set fire. So again, seems a little bit low there. If we look at some of the other stuff that have those those guns as well, uh, for example, like Frederick de Grosse, same tier, should have roughly similar secondaries in terms of the 150s. Uh, yeah, so these that's uh, eight percent chance to set fire as well. So maybe I'm not wrong, or maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so that's why we check. Anyway, back to the stats or specs. AA defense, you have pretty decent AA defense, and most of the time nobody comes near me. Uh, you do have to uh, go up against, like, carriers occasionally, and you could swap out your sonar, which I wouldn't recommend since you're going to be brawling. Having a sonar comes in real handy. Um, you could swap out your sonar for a defensive AA as well to boost that AA even more. But you have the 20mm Flak Veerling 38. You get 32 of those doing 48 damage per second, reaching out 2 kilometers. Then you have the 55mm L77 Girat 58 Zwillings. You get uh, 14 of those doing 171 damage per second, reaching out 5 kilometers. And then you have the 128mm L61 KM40 dual purpose secondaries. You get uh, 20 of those doing 124 damage per second, reaching out 5.2. So solid AA for a, a, a cruiser. Maximum speed in this thing is not particularly fast at 35 or 33.5 knots. Turning circle is not particularly good at 840 meters. That's pretty actually pretty bad for a cruiser. And then rudder shift time is, is battleship-esque. Uh, you could swap in some rudders if you want. But again, propulsion mod's nice to help you close the distance. And having concealment is pretty much a mandatory on a brawling ship. You gotta be able to close the distance, so just deal with it. Concealment. Detectability by sea is 11.3, so not particularly amazing, um, for, especially for a cruiser. Uh, detectability by air 7.1, guaranteed is always 2, and detectability while firing in smoke is 10 kilometers. Statistics. I got a 50% win rate because this it's a meme ship. It's not its not a carry kind of ship. It is a meme ship. You go out there to have fun with the ship. You don't go out there to put up a gajillion damage with your main guns, citadeling everything and, and doing all that. What you can do, though, is help your destroyers uh, get rid of other destroyers if you're in the neighborhood. But you can't put the ship out on an island. It will get you killed. Uh, if you're being focused by battleships, you're not long for this world. Uh, it does have decent side armor, which we'll go over in a minute, but the rest of it's not particularly great. Uh, as you can see, I have a sub-1 
warships destroyed. That goes back to the fact we're relying on secondaries to do most of our damage. Um, if you don't get the RNG for the fires, you're probably not going to do a whole lot. Potential for a cruiser is way up there. 1.2 million average potential damage per game. Goes to show I'm brawling in this ship. So everything you hear, just take it with a grain of salt. This is strictly a brawling ship in my opinion. Okay. And brawling in the sense of just using the secondaries. I don't mean that it's tanky and that it should be up there brawling with battleships, okay? You probably want to be in a kiting position going away from battleships to keep the secondaries going as long as possible uh, and to try to protect yourself from the um, incoming fire. So let's go over. So we have 27 millimeters bow and stern plating. What does that mean? It means you bit overmatched by anything 16 inches and above. 15 inches and below do not overmatch your bow or the stern, which is kind of nice. Gives you a little bit less people shooting at the uh, bow and stern. However, it doesn't really matter because your armor is very flat. So even though you have some decent armor, look at, this, look at the side profile. You see that red? It's thicker armor, but it's flat. So angling it is going to be very difficult at any sort of uh, any sort of range against battleship caliber guns. They will pin you quite a bit. It's same same situation with Minnesota, Kansas, uh, Vermont, all of these ships that have really flat armor. They're very early designs. They're not modern designs. These were likely designed prior to World War II where angling the armor just was unheard of at the time. Uh, it was before anybody figured out that if you angle armor, it becomes even more effective for a less weight. So flat armor thick right anyway uh torpedo protection you got a little bit of it it's very deep torp protection so don't count on it to help you in terms of that you do have a little bit of a turtle back armor again it is a cruiser turtle back it's not particularly amazing it will still get you yeeted uh much like the hipper prince Eugen, so on and so forth at any sort of medium to long range you have no turtle back essentially it will if you get caught over angled you're getting citadel at close range, it might protect you from getting dev struck, but you're still going to eat all those pins and you're still going to take a boatload of damage. So best to just try to dodge getting out of way of shells whenever possible or using the angle of the belt to try to protect yourself. All right, side upper side plating is pretty nice, 90 mil, and then of course the belt uh, right at the uh, angle of the the turtle back. We've got 90 mil to 190 mil. Uh, nothing overmatches that, so you don't have to worry about that. You just got to worry about the fact that it's very, very flat. Again, you can see, looking right up the side of it, it's very flat. Whereas at the front, you have a little bit of angling. The, the center of the ship that sticks way out of the water is very flat. So it's very easy for people to get pins, even if they don't overmatch. Okay? So keep that in mind. That being said, it does come in handy and will bail you out, especially against cruisers and... Uh, battleship captains who always have to go for the citadel you can you can get them uh off guard quite a bit all right and then the citadel the citadel is slightly above the water line again you got a turtle back to help protect you at close range but don't rely on it try to get out the way if you can or just don't sorry i had to had to yawn uh this ship has big guns it is armed with high caliber main battery guns. 305s, it's a super cruiser. Secondary reach, above average secondaries. That is the one upside to this ship. Uh, ironclad, above average armor thickness. Don't rely on it because while it may have above average armor thickness, like we talked about, it's very flat, meaning you will get pinned. So be careful. The Schroeder. Drawing on experience gained in World War I during the late 20s, Germany began to consider the idea of developing a large surface raider. The projects had to account for Great Britain's intention to limit battleship armament to a maximum caliber of 12 inches, 305 millimeters, in upcoming naval conferences. Therefore, under the proposed designs, the standard displacement varied between 17,500 and 25,000 tons, while the armament consisted of four turrets housing eight 12-inch guns accompanied by a strong secondary battery of 5.9-inch, 150-millimeter guns. She's designed in 1945, so it's actually designed after World War II? Yeah, World War II ended in 1945, right? I'm not crazy. I might be crazy. Y'all are going to make fun of me. It's late. I apologize. Anyway, with that being said, let's get through our flyby and get to the gameplay.
Alrighty, so in this first clip, we are going to showcase what happens when a Brindisi decides that he left the stove on and really needs to go turn it off. So he yellows around the corner, smoke enabled, he's like, I will sneak up on this guy, and then he fires his guns, gets detected. Obviously, I've got my sonar running, expecting torpedoes from a Brindisi. He's over-angled, flat broadside, essentially, and so we have the AP ready to go. He wasn't fooling anybody, he telegraphed exactly what he was going to do, and we were ready for it. So we have taken all of his health with front guns and rear guns take, leaving him with just enough to get away well not really because now we're loaded again and he goes home so uh, he can go get make sure he turns the oven off um, but the rest of that we're going to showcase in uh, this next video um, just how nasty this thing can be in the right situation as well as how hilarious this thing is as a uh, secondary ship like i said this is not a carry boat okay you are not going to be putting up a ton of solo warriors in the ship uh at least most people won't anyway uh this is solely a fun ship and by fun i emphasize like it's a meme ha ha hello it's not a oh yeah look at this ship i'm gonna take it out and have a blast no that's the z52 okay this this is a god i hope i don't get ruined just so that i can get that one moment where i get to giggle for a little wet that's all that's all it is that is all this is. There's nothing wrong with that, necessarily. But boy, this update has really turned on its head, if you ask me. Like, I had so much hope when I heard about the Vermont coming in, and I've been let down with that. And then we got this thing as a command campaign ship, and it's been pretty me. I wasn't originally going to do a video right away on this, but I got nothing else to do at the moment, so might as well. Uh, I'm not planning on getting the Vermont imme or like immediately, because it's going to be, I think, 30 million silver for the Bureau Project, I believe, next next Monday. By the way, the, everybody's asking about the Vermont, when it's available. It'll be available, I believe, next Monday for 30 million silver in the store. And by 30 million silver, I mean you have to pay 30 million silver for the, the Bureau Project that you then got to spend 5 to 20 weeks trying to unlock, depending on how much you uh, have in terms of commanders and all that. So, uh, yeah. Don't worry, guys. You're not missing out on much. If you if you feel some type of way about not having the Ohio or not having a, a Vermont, just jump into Montana, take it out. You'll have a better time. So anyway, <laughs> I'm still salty about that. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, but we are going to showcase the ship. It's just gonna take some time, so I'm feeling it. So uh, thank you guys so much for all of the support. You guys are amazing. Uh, we've tried. You guys know, we've tried everything we can to get the Vermont to, like, wake up, and it's just, it's not a bad ship, okay? It's still, it's still a freaking 12-gun armor-piercing monster that can slap the crap out of everything that decides to show itself. And occasionally you're going to get lucky, and you're going to get the RNG to actually agree with you, and you're going to get those ridiculous hits on people. But more often than not, the shells are going to just shatter and bounce and do weird things that 18-inch shells shouldn't be doing. But, uh, I digress. Um, I appreciate all y'all. I really do. Like, you guys have been great. So we're going to, uh, give you guys another treat with the Schroeder here. Now, again, I am a CC. A lot of people forget that, uh, uh, this is a thing. So I just got reinstated in the CC program recently. And as such, CCs are loaned the new ships so that we can make videos on them for two weeks. And then they take those ships back. And then we got to grind them out ourselves. Okay. So that, that's where we get these ships so early I, I forgot to mention that in my videos on the other two ships so far so thank you to wargaming for allowing us to uh, show these ships off for folks i like to show these ships off and i already had a couple of people comment saying oh well spartan i i only watched you because you weren't a cc you weren't you weren't leashed to wargaming it's like look i'm not leashed to anybody all right the fact that i've been kicked out of the cc program once should lend an idea as to what that is like i i don't i i do have filters obviously i've gotten better at it but i don't i don't sell out right i give you my honest opinion on a ship and i mean let's be honest there's no better better like example of this than the vermont i wanted the vermont to be great i'm an american battleship maine a lot of people loves that uh that that title for me i'm biased to the americans um but it's just meh like it's there's nothing that that ship does that none other none of the other legendary ships wouldn't do better like i right now i would rank vermont middle of the road at best occasionally it'll get you a good a good fun moment but most of the time just sadness 
Now, the first thing you're going to notice in this video is I'm trying to put myself in a kiting position. Why is that? Well, because I got two battleships coming my way. I got a carrier to support them and a cruiser that is exactly the same thing as I am. So any advantage I would have in terms of secondaries just got completely wiped out and I'm up against two other battleships as well. So, and both of those battleships overmatch me. So we got to play it a little bit cautiously here. We don't want to throw our hit points away. We don't have any support. We got a battleship who's parked next to an island where he can't go anywhere. So he's just going to get focused down. We got another battleship over in the gap uh, to my left. He's kind of sitting there waiting to get yeeted. And then he's going to reverse around the corner and get yeeted by the Jean Bart that's been there the whole time. But uh, we're in a cheeky spot here. The Schroeder, I, I had noticed that the Schroeder had decided to go inside. I initially thought he might go outside. So we're in a perfect position. And watch, we're using the edge of the island to be able to shoot him. And the secondaries can shoot him. And we get to sit here and do what we got to do without being spotted. Because we don't get spotted unless we go too far out. And then our, our tower, our uh, conning tower, gets past the island. As soon as that happens, we are going to be spotted. You'll see when it happens. Uh, but... And there it is. So, as soon as our tower moves past the edge of the island, he can then get line of sight on us and then spot us. Before that, I could get cheeky shots on him with the secondaries and everything, and our secondaries have done a pretty solid job, and we're shooting AP into the superstructure area of the ship, and you can see it's pretty, it's pretty okay, but it's not, it's not anything crazy. But look at these secondaries, man. They are relentless. Relentless. And this is, this is the difference between having, um, you know, a little bit of skill to go with the play, right? Like, I know what I'm looking forward to. I know what I'm supposed to do with the ship. So we, we just play patiently. Don't get ourselves in a bad position. Play based on what the people around us are doing. Because the number one problem that you're going to get into with this ship is that you're just going to have to be too aggressive and you're going to get yeeted. Just like every ge or every German torp boat that you see out there. Like they all do the same thing. They rush forward immediately to get those secondaries and torps ready to go, and then they just die immediately. It doesn't matter how many hit points you have. If you put yourself in a bad position, get focused by everybody, you're not going to live that long. So here you can see I'm actually anticipating getting rushed. I know that there's two battleships here. I know that cruiser is going to be probably trying to loop back around. So we just got to prepare ourselves for the inevitable rush of the enemy team. We've lost the battleship here, so there's nothing holding these guys back. The Atlantico that's to my left over there, or actually be to my right now, but the Atlantico, the closest battleship to me, is reversing towards a Jean Bart. Um, so his secondary should be tearing that Jean Bart up, and you can see that that's exactly what's happening. However, I don't think that the... Uh, Atlantico is going to win that fight between the Atlantico fighting a Jean Bart and the fact that there's a carrier also helping the Jean Bart. It's probably not going to stick around forever. So I've got to get into a position where I can defense or defend myself, right? And so I'm thinking, okay, there's an island right here with a lighthouse. I can potentially use this island to shield the part of my ship that's overmatchable, and then I have my guns and my uh, secondaries ready to go for everybody that comes around that island. That is not what happens. I put myself in a position anticipating what the enemy is going to do, and in true enemy fashion, they decide to not do that thing that you want them to do. You know, the best best laid plans of mice and men are the, the best... The best game plan only survives first encounter. I forget what everything goes. There's a there's a lot of different sayings that mean the same thing essentially. But uh, the we fire the shot for HE at the cruiser. We fire the rear turret at the uh, uh, Sovetsky, and we're gonna try to push. We use the island to break contact so that we don't get smashed while we are broadside to the Sovetsky. And now we're gonna close the distance. Now that we see that there's only one battleship here. There's the better chance that I can potentially uh, catch these guys off guard. But we're also going to go ahead and take a shot at the Schroeder. Take a, see if we can keep him away from us. If we can drive him away, that will allow me to potentially fight, all, fight one at a time. And that I feel much better about. Fighting three ships at once is a hard, hard ask of any ship. Fighting one ship at a time is a manageable situation for any ship. If you know what you're doing, you can pretty much go 1v1 against anybody in anything, right? Like, obviously, if you're, same, if you're in a similar skill level, the better ship's going to win, right? But 9 times out of 10, if you're a 1v1 situation and you're the better player, it doesn't matter what ship you're in, 
the rock nose, and we're going to be able to, uh, you know, box, essentially. We're, we're, we're trading blows. We, we got this. Like, watch the way the Alabama plays this. And we are going to shoot AP initially. And I do know that the AP is terrible, and I, I just want to showcase it for you guys. I had a feeling that this could be the one. Look at where the enemy battleship is pushing into Alpha. Look at the, the uh, enemy Alabama. I aim high, and three overpins for 2300 damage. Yeah, that's not going to fly, Sunshine. And I don't know what that man was aiming at. <laughs> I'll be real honest. That first shot struck me as odd. But also, the fact this guy's just sitting broadside. I wish the AP was better on this thing. I really do. Now, there is an argument to be made for this engagement that if I had stayed with the AP, I would have maybe been able to get some shots through that bow side plating because he was very, very stationary early on, which could have led to some more damage. But now, we're going to showcase that damage control management, having good kiting away, getting the secondaries firing off both sides of the ship, so that we've got maximum potential uh, going downrange. We get the fires, get the double fires on the Alabama going. So here you can see I'm going to go, okay, well, we've got secondaries firing off both sides of the ship at two different targets. We've got the Schroeder in the back round that's low health. So while the Alabama is double fired, I don't want to take a chance of starting another fire. So I go ahead and I shoot at the, uh, the Schroeder. And we do actually pick up another fire. This one, I think, is on the Rosaya. But you can see, even at a decent angle, the Alabama is just shredding us. And that, that's that, that flat armor that we were talking about. You have to be really, really angled. And I just don't have that luxury here because I have a battleship on both sides of me. So if I try to angle even better against one, I'm opening the angle on the other. So we, again, use our damage controls. And this is where this ship really does shine. Is that it, it really does do a very good job of stopping... Um, holding its own for a very long time. Look at my team on the minimap. Our team's grabbing the B cap. So I'm just drawing these guys out. I'm pulling them away from objectives. I'm trying to soften them up for the rest of the team to give our team the best chance of winning here. It's the only play that I had in this, this game. I didn't have anything else to do. It was literally this moment was the only thing that we had an opportunity to really get a hold of. And of course, in the last moment, we get hit with some HE and get a fire, leaving us with nothing. And then we get one more shot out, hoping for the fire and just unfortunately not able to pull it in. But look at that, almost, or we got over 300 secondary hits in this game in that short amount of time, right? 300 total. First one was 76, and that was on the Schroeder initially. Then in the last, we ended up with over 300 because we were able to fire the guns off both sides of the ship. And then we were trying to help the team by dragging them away from the objectives, which allows our team to make, get the points lead. We're losing the game right now. But we have two caps, they don't have any, meaning we are gaining all the points, and they're not gaining any points unless they kill us. So at this point, I get into chat, and I'm like, guys, just remember, all you got to do, run away. If you survive, we win. The enemy cannot win unless they kill you. And at this point, everybody in the chat like lights up and everybody's like, oh my god, it's Spartan Elite. And we had a good time. Uh, and they did the right thing here. They, they absolutely did the right thing. They understood. And our carrier manages to take down the Schroeder. Um, and so like our, our team pulls it together. But recognizing late in the game when you have the win and not needing to win harder is a skill in and of itself. You gotta pay attention, guys. Pay attention to the scores, pay attention to the base count, pay attention to who's left and how much health they got, because I'm telling you, you never know. Don't ever give your team a chance to throw the game, all right? Because it will. And you can see it's at this point, I'm like, guys, just just run away. And this is where everybody starts starts uh, going, yeah, man, that's what that's what we're going to do. And it was it was a great time. And we just sent, we spend the rest of the match, two minutes of sitting here yapping back and forth, just having a good time and giggling about uh, how, how the game went. Um, but again, there was nothing I could do on that side. And if I'd have got too aggressive early, I'd have been fighting two battleships and a Schroeder at the same time, and that would have been dead, right? Like, there's no getting around that. The two battleships that were with me, I'll give the Atlantico a little bit of credit because he at least tried to, to like limit who could shoot him. You could see he reversed around the corner, focused down the Jean Bart, that sort of stuff. But paying attention to the minimap, seeing if your team is going to be able to get those crossfires and holding the, the enemy team's attention and pulling them away from the objectives. I've said it a million times, when is the only time that kiting works? The only time that kiting is effective is if they're willing to chase you. 
If they stop chasing you, you got to stop kiting. That's just how it works, okay? I don't make the rules. That's just how it is. If nobody chases you, kiting is pointless, which is why we don't chase kites. Right, guys? That's just how it is. So keep all of these little tips in mind when you're in these situations because you will win the game. And look at us. We're 500 points now. So the enemy is just done. There's less than a minute left. They cannot win this game unless they kill us, right? So... Again, it, it just comes down to recognizing when you have those advantages, paying attention, map awareness, team awareness, making sure you're paying attention to where your team is. And this is something that I, I get in trouble with quite a bit because I will recognize situations like this late in the game. But during the like initial stages of the game, a lot of times I get tunnel vision and I overextend and I put myself in bad positions because I'm trying to get entertaining gameplay and because I like to play aggressively. And so what ends up happening is I put myself in a bad position, I get focused, I get taken out early, and then everybody is like, okay, well, you know, you're screwed. But even in those situations, a lot of times I will end up surviving longer than the majority of my team, which is baffling to me because <laughs> I, I still don't understand how that works. But I hope that this has been an eye-opener for you guys. I hope that this this uh, first look at the... Um, the Schroeder will let you know what you can expect from the ship. The AP, not good. The HE is mid. The secondaries are god tier for what they are. And it can be fun, but it is not exactly a great ship by any stretch. So we, we don't even get that much because most of our damage came from secondaries and you just don't get rewarded for secondaries either. So that's the other downside of secondaries. You get less XP for having secondary damage. It's just the way the game is. So 135k, not a bad game. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, and if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.